In other words, something's got to give. But with costs increasing and the government trying to cut the deficit, it's just a question of who blinks first. Ed Conway, Sky News. Well, Dr Howard Freeman is in our central London studio. He's clinical director of NHS Partners Network, which represents independent providers of NHS clinical services. Members include both for-profit and not-for-profit sectors and include large international hospital groups and small specialist providers. So, Dr Freeman, how do independent providers fit into the NHS? What are the kind of services that they provide? Well, good evening, Ian. Uh, independent sector providers provide services across the board. They provide community services, uh, hospital services, NHS 111 services, all free at the point of delivery to NHS patients and at the same standard that other NHS providers deliver those services. Last year, 10 million NHS patients were treated in independent sector providers. Half a million surgical interventions were done across 2,000 sites, and that cost about 6.8% of the total NHS budget that we saw just before. Could the NHS function without these independent providers? Well, we add capacity to the NHS, and right from 1948, the NHS has worked as a partnership of NHS-owned providers and independent sector providers. If we think about dentists, pharmacists, hospices, they've always been there in the NHS. And certainly when the acute sector is under as much pressure as it is now, I think it's unlikely that the NHS could provide services to patients with waiting times, even as they are now, without the support of the independent sector. Now, one of the big complaints that we frequently hear, particularly from the unions and the Labour Party, is that these independent providers are somehow in competition with the NHS. Is that actually true? No, it's not true. We call ourselves the Partners Network because we partner N NHS providers. The NHS just does not have the capacity to deliver all of the work that it needs to do in NHS-owned providers. And so it has to deliver some of that work in non-NHS-owned providers in the independent sector. And indeed, we take pressure off the sector. We innovate for the sector. Uh, one of our members, Healthcare at Home, has got a virtual ward, which it's run for about 20 years now for 19 acute NHS providers, where patients can phone up, get advice 24 hours a day from a healthcare professional, which means they don't have to go into hospital. So we actually support the NHS in a huge number of ways. So why is it, do you think, in that case, that you're not in competition with the NHS, the NHS couldn't survive without some level of independent provision. Why is it that the healthcare unions have such a downer on, on independent provision? Well, I can't speak for the healthcare unions. Uh, the unions have their own views. As I've said, the NHS has worked in partnership with independent sector providers right from its inception. And if this is privatisation by stealth, which I've heard the unions claim, it's a very long process, isn't it? If by after the NHS started, we're still only at 6.8% of the budget. It's going to take several lifetimes if it is privatisation by stealth. Well, surely one of the problems is that whilst government spending is roughly in line with advanced country averages, it's the amount of spending by private households on health care that's way below the international average. Is that something that we need to think about more households stumping up more money for themselves? Well, I think that's a big political issue, isn't it? Uh, that's something that we as a country have to debate, and it's something that the government or the opposition parties have to think about. I think what's happening now is that the NHS is seeing the effect of the demographic uh, changes, the fact that doctors can provide more and more treatments, fortunately, which keep people alive longer, and those treatments are much more expensive. So we as a nation have to decide how we want to spend our money. All right, Howard Friedman, appreciate you joining me. Thanks very much. My pleasure. Thank you, Ian.